Hello, everyone. I'm very grateful to my friends at the Salvation Army in Clyde Bank for inviting me to contribute to this excellent Worship at Home series on this Harvest Thanksgiving Sunday. Among the many happy army memories of my childhood are the Harvest Festival Thanksgiving weekends. On those weekends, the, the worship hall was always remarkably transformed into a place of vibrant colour uh, with lots of nice smells and many temptations to a young boy like me to pinch a grape or an apple when no one was looking. And on the Monday night, there would be uh, a barn party, uh, uh, lots of singing, lots of fun, lots of games, and I just loved it. Harvest was a very special time for me. I heard of one minister who uh, always described the Harvest Festival Thanksgiving as the knees up before the freeze up. And I quite like that because that's how it was for me. But times change. The Harvest Thanksgiving celebration has lost some of its impact. Modern farming techniques, the global availability of fruit and vegetables all year round and full kitchen freezers mean we can have what we want when we want it. We can have strawberries on Christmas Day, no problem. Another reason why the Harvest Festival has lost some of its appeal is because 24-hour news gives us reports from countries in the grip of famine, shows us starving refugees, seriously malnourished children, and that tends to make some of us who live in the rich West feel just a little about, bit uncomfortable about celebrating our full fridges and our stocked up freezers. It's hard when children are crying for bread. In my travels to different parts of the world as a Salvation Army officer, I've seen this kind of poverty. I've seen people living in a remote area where it hasn't rained for months on end. They have no access to a market, no access to shops, so have to grow their fruit and vegetables in the open sewer drain. Yes, the open sewer drain, because that's the only source of moisture. The BBC reported data recently from the World Food Programme uh, that at the end of 2019, 135 million people were living with acute hunger. But now, with many countries around the world enforcing quarantine due to the coronavirus, the number is likely to rise to 265 million. So it can be difficult for some of us with full stomachs to comfortably celebrate harvest. But that said, the harvest Thanksgiving celebration must never be diminished and never allowed to disappear. One reason for saying that is that the history of the, farm, of the Harvest Festival can be traced right back to Old Testament times. When God gave his laws to his people, he commanded them to keep certain feasts and festivals, and many of these were linked to harvest. So 4,000 years ago, God's people were celebrating harvest in a big way. And God's people must make sure that they always Christians must always be thankful people. And here are some reasons why. First of all, giving thanks is something that the Bible repeatedly tells us we must do. For example, we read earlier from Psalm 95, verse 1 says, Let us come before him with thanksgiving and extol him with music and song. Psalm 100, verse 4, Enter his gates with thanksgiving and his courts with praise. Give thanks to him and praise his name. And in the New Testament, Ephesians 5, 18, Sing and make music in your heart to the Lord, always giving thanks to God the Father for everything in the name of our Lord Jesus Christ. And in Philippians 4, 6 and 7, do not be anxious about anything, but in every situation, by prayer and petition, with thanksgiving, present your requests 
to God. You see, the Bible makes it clear that having a thankful heart is not an optional extra for the people of God. We have so much to thank God for, so we should and we must do it, not just on one weekend a year, but on every day. Secondly, having a thankful heart inspires generosity within us. The logical outcome of a thankful heart will be a greatly increased awareness of how fortunate and blessed we are. And when we realise that, we'll want to share what we have with others. From the beginning, Harvest Festival was also meant to be a time to be generous. God told the people, celebrate the Feast of Weeks, which was the Harvest Festival. Celebrate it to the Lord your God by giving a free will offering in proportion to the blessings the Lord your God has given you. In the Salvation Army, we traditionally give an extra financial gift for the work of the army at harvest time. So you see, our altar service has its origins in the Old Testament. When I was a boy, there was always one of these on the table at mealtimes. Uh, some watching who are of my generation may recognise this and remember it. It was called a grace before meat box. Before every meal, Salvation Army families would put a few coins in this box to support what was then called the goodwill work of the Salvation Army. It was a very powerful reminder that many were less fortunate than we were with little to eat and it was a prompt to be generous. Yeah, having a thankful heart inspires generosity. And the third thing I'd like to say is that having a thankful heart needs to become the default position for every Christian. In other words, whatever happens in life, however much our circumstances change, our base position must always be thankfulness. The Apostle Paul wrote in 1 Thessalonians 5.18, Give thanks in all circumstances, for this is the will of God in Christ Jesus for you. Give thanks in all circumstances, he said. Well, that's a big ask, isn't it? But it's where we have to be, even in the anxious times of COVID-19. Dutch-born uh, Corrie ten Boom and her Christian family helped many Jews escape the Nazi Holocaust during World War II. They saved nearly 800 lives. But sadly, she was betrayed by a fellow Dutch citizen and as a result, she and her entire family were imprisoned. In her book, The Hiding Place, she relates an incident that taught her about the importance of thanksgiving. She and her sister Betsy had been transferred to one of the worst German prison camps, the camp at Ravensbrück. And upon entering the barracks, they found it extremely overcrowded and worse still, it was flea infested. But their scripture reading that morning was from 1 Thessalonians 5, 8, which had reminded them to rejoice always, pray constantly and give thanks in all circumstances. Now, Corrie's sister Betsy told Corrie to take the word of the Lord to her heart and thank the Lord for every detail of their new quarters, including their flea-infested circumstances. Corrie at first flatly refused, but Betsy persisted and told her to give thanks for the fleas, so she did. Well, during the months they spent at the camp, they were surprised to find at how remarkably free they were to hold Bible studies and worship times and prayer meetings. They were free without the guards coming into the barrack room, interfering and stopping them. It was only several months later when they learned why they had this freedom. The guards would not enter because of the fleas. Give thanks 
whatever your circumstances. Here's a final thought. Having a thankful heart helps us to be happy and healthy. John Henry Jowett was a British preacher of an earlier generation, and he said this about gratitude. He said, gratitude is a vaccine, an antitoxin, and an antiseptic. It's a vaccine. It can prevent the invasion of a disgruntled, discouraged spirit. It's an antitoxin in that it can prevent the effects of the poisons of cynicism and criticism and grumbling. And it's an antiseptic because it generates a spirit of gratitude. Thankfulness can soothe and heal the most troubled mind and heart. Friends, at this harvest time, let us obey the word of the Lord and be thankful. And let that thankfulness inspire generosity. And then let us all try to make being thankful our default position, whatever happens. We will find it will make our life much more fulfilling and it will make a difference to many other lives. God bless you and be thankful today.